Everybody ready up in Fresno there? Thank you. Yeah, it looks like it. Uh-huh. I'm not hearing any sound. Uh, uh, yes, we're we're ready and waiting. <laughs> okay, sounds sounds good. There we are. Sounds good. It was testing our eyesight. That was uh, you just uh, you were just on the small screen here. So. Okay. Well, if, uh, if everybody's ready, we'll um, uh, the time, bewitching hour has arrived here. So we'll uh, call a meeting to order, and uh, ask the clerk if she would take kind of take the roll. Okay, Miss Dunn. Here. Mr. Stovall. Here. Dr. Na. Here. Due to the chair, we have a quorum. Okay, thank you, thank you. Hopefully everybody's had a chance to take a look at the uh, consent calendar. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, do we have a motion uh, on the consent calendar for approval? So moved. Uh, motion by Dr. Na. Seconded, please. Second by Ms. Dunn. Uh, and Stephanie, if you'd take the uh, roll. I don't know if it's Stephanie or Katrina, I can't see you. So. It's Stephanie here. All right, Ms. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Stovall? Uh, yes. Dr. Na? Yes. Due to the chair, motion passed. Okay, thank you. Well, let's go to the uh, public hearing portion of our uh, uh, meeting here and uh, ask all those who will be testifying today to uh, raise your right hand and uh, we'll have an oath for you here. Do you solemnly swear or affirm under penalty of perjury that the testimony you should give in the matters before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. I do. do. Oh. Okay. The uh, record should reflect that all of the uh, witnesses uh, affirmatively responded. And so let's go to uh, S2313S, uh, a uh, short variance for. Uh, Era Energy LLC. Right. You would come forward and just uh, state your name and spell spell it uh, for the record. Uh, would be great. Yeah. Uh, hello, my name is Aaron Albrocht. I'm an environmental specialist for Era Energy. Okay, thank you, Aaron. Nathan Peavy, Process Specialist, Air Energy. Okay, great. And uh, Aaron, that's uh, uh, A L B R S H T and P E E B Y B Y. Okay. Uh, and Chris, I think this is uh, yours. Do you want to go ahead and uh, <coughs> give you the first uh, first uh, <coughs> testimony? Sure. All right. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Chris Kalash, and I'm a air quality specialist here at the Air District. <clears throat> Before you is ERA, and they operate equipment that's associated with the production and storage of light crude oil and gas from the Lost Hills oil field in Kern County. Uh, the produced oil and gas is routed to the Lost Hills 1 dehydration facility, and as required by District Rule 4623 in the facility's permit conditions, the tanks, this facility, and vessels are to be maintained in a leak-free condition and controlled by a functional and operating vapor recovery system. Aaron needs to replace a section of pipe on the vapor recovery system serving the tanks at the Lost Hills 1 dehydration facility. Uh, this section of pipe cannot be isolated and requires a complete shutdown of the vapor recovery system to complete the work. <clears throat> During the shutdown period, the tanks will operate with pressure vacuum valves and be maintained at a constant level to minimize emissions. ERA has requested a short variance from the applicable requirements of district rules in addition to the applicable conditions of the subject permits. The requested short variance period to be effective for non-consecutive 144 hour that is period that is to occur sometime between May, well, not May 11th, May 17th, 2023 and July 11th, 2023 inclusive. If granted, the variance will allow ERA <clears throat> to continue to store VOC containing liquids in the subject tanks without a functional <laughs> or operating vapor recovery system while this pipe section is replaced. In lieu of obtaining a variance, ERA could remain in compliance by draining, degassing, and cleaning the subject tanks. Based on <clears throat> current crude oil prices, shutting down production would result in a loss of approximately $176,000 per day. 
Air has estimated that excess VOC emissions from this variant may be as high as 1,950 pounds. I did want to make everybody aware that there is one change. Mm -hmm. On page three of your staff report on finding number five, this is the one that talks about, you know, it says during the period the variance is in effect, the applicant will reduce excess emissions to the maximum extent feasible. In the third or the second sentence, the second sentence reads, Arrow will attempt to keep the oil in the tanks at a constant level to reduce working losses. That has been taken out. So the, um, the updated version on finding five, that second sentence is no longer there. Okay. And with that being said, the district believes required findings as set forth in the California Health and Safety Code can be made and recommends that ERA be granted a short variance with the conditions on pages three, four, and five, in addition to the change on in finding number five on page three. And this concludes the district's presentation. Okay, thank you, Chris. Uh -huh. uh, any questions for Chris? Well, we'll go then to uh, uh, Eric. Um, I, I thank you for taking that uh, second part out. That was uh, that was included in the calculations, um, the, the variable level operation of the tank. So um, everything else was sounded sounded good. Okay. Any questions for Eric? No, I think I'm straight. Okay. okay. Um, we'll give an opportunity then for any public comment. I'm not seeing any here in Bakersfield. Is uh, anything up in Fresno? There's no public comment in Fresno. Okay. Uh, there being no further uh, comment, then we'll go ahead and close the hearing and uh, see if we have a motion. I'll go ahead. I'm a little foggy. Oh, okay. did, did I'm a little foggy. Yeah, yeah, no I'm okay as long as it's not the same as I wrote it. <laughs> Um, okay. I move to approve Air Energy LLC's petition for a short variance set forth in docket number S-23-13S with the required six findings of the health and safety code adopted by reference as set forth in the staff report. The variance shall be effective for the period. Um, for a non-consecutive 144-hour period to occur sometime between May 11, 2023 and July 11, 2023, inclusive or until the proposed work is completed and the VRS is returned to compliant operation, whichever occurs first, and shall be subject to the conditions on pages three to five of the staff report. Okay, thank you. Uh, motion by Dr. Na. Seconded. Uh, second by Ms. Dunn. Uh, so, Stephanie. Dr. Na. Yes. Since today's meeting is May 17th, um, Chris did verbally say May 17th as far as the beginning time for the variance. Oh, right. Did you meet, need me to make the motion again, or can we just amend that? Amend it. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I think. You can just uh, amend well, it. Check for counsel and see. Okay, so we have five minutes, and I assume that the amendment's okay with a second? Second is okay. Okay, so we have a, a amendment to the motion that's been approved by the second, and we'll ask uh, Stephanie if you would take the roll. Ms. Dunn? Yes. Mr. Stovall? Yes. Dr. Nam? Mm -hmm. Yes. Due to the chair, motion passes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, folks. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> okay. okay, so the next uh, item on the docket is uh, S2314S, uh, short variance for Elon Bakersfield refining. And if you'd come forward and, and state your name and uh, spell it for the, for the record. Matthew Jalali, spelled J-A-L-A-L-I. I'm the EHS Director for Long Bakersfield Refining. 
Okay, thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, so, Sh Shannon, I believe this is yours. Uh, you yes, thank you. Hello, my name is Shannon Moore. I'm an air quality specialist here at the district. Before you this morning is Alon Bakersfield Refining, which is an idle petroleum refinery that incorporates a network of sumps, tanks, and piping to store, transfer, receive, and ship petroleum products. Various parts of the network are required by district rules and permit conditions to operate using a vapor recovery system to collect vapors, which are then routed for disposal. Alon operates the Area 1 Wastewater Treatment Unit number 83 to dispose of surface rainwater runoff, water from cleaning and maintenance activities, and other water from processes on site that generate VOC contamination. District rules and permit conditions require the sumps and, takes and tanks at the wastewater treatment unit to be controlled by a functional and operating vapor recovery system. <clears throat> Alon is in the process of inspecting, repairing, and replacing equipment to convert the facility from a petroleum refinery to a renewable diesel production facility. They have identified a 250-foot section of header piping that needs to be replaced. In order to complete the project, Alon will need to shut down the vapor recovery system for the Area 1 wastewater treatment unit. Alon will complete as much preparation work as possible before turning off the vapor recovery system to minimize downtime. However, they still expect the system to be shut down for 21 days, or up to 21 days. Once the vapor recovery system is shut down, the facility will be in violation of district rules and permit conditions. Therefore, Alon has requested a short variance from requirements of the applicable district rules, in addition to the applicable conditions of the subject permits. The requested variance period would be for 21 consecutive days to occur sometime between June 1st, 2023 and July 31st, 2023 inclusive. If granted, the short variance would allow for the continued storage of VOC containing liquids at the wastewater treatment unit without a functional operating vapor recovery system while they replace a 250 foot section of header piping. Alon will monitor wastewater levels during the variance to calculate vapors that are released. Based on a recent 90 day average of wastewater throughput, Alon has calculated that in a worst case scenario, excess emissions could be up to 1,612 pounds of VOCs. The district believes the required findings as set forth in the California Health and Safety Code can be made and recommends that Alon Bakersfield refining be granted a short variance with the conditions on pages three and four. And that concludes the district's presentation. I do have one small correction as well on page three under recommendations, item number two. The permit number, the second permit number that's listed there, S-33-23-23, should read S-33-20-23. Oh. <clears throat> and that concludes the okay. okay. Could you repeat those numbers again, Shannon? Yes. S-33-20-23. The second line oh, okay. down that, that permit there under item number two. <clears throat> okay. okay. Which will be that, that'll be updated and okay. included in the final decision order for you to sign. Right, right. And it's actually included in this copy. So that's oh, it does have that in that copy? I wasn't sure if you got yes. the updated copy or not. Yeah. Oh good, good. Okay. Yeah. Then yeah, yeah there I just wanted to make sure that uh, the timing on that, I wasn't sure if you had received the updated one. Oh, gotcha. 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 Uh, any questions for Shan? Dr. Nye? I was just curious. There's usually a, like an economic loss calculation or estimate, but um, I noticed that there wasn't. In this case, that condition was met. Um, item number two, they're currently not operating. Um, they're in the process of cleaning up a bunch of the tanks and converting over to a different operation. If the variance isn't granted, the piping won't be replaced and may eventually leak, resulting in excess emissions and subjecting uh, a lawn to penalties, uh, enforcement action and penalties. So that would be the potential excess or, or um, economic loss uh, or loss in that case. Okay, so this, so then it, it's a potential future loss if they began operation in this field, they would have right. that loss. But we just don't know exactly how much it would be. If that... That's correct. It would depend on the amount, the, the size of the leak, the, the and the violation type. Okay. That answers your question. Any other questions for Shannon? No. Okay. Uh, with that, then, uh, we'll go to Matthew and see if you have uh, anything you'd like to ask. 
No, I would appreciate the opportunity to uh, to be here. Just one thing about the yeah, if you don't do this uh, maintenance, that would push out the startup of the refinery. So eventually, like I said, the future losses will occur if you have to shut down during operation versus now that we are not operating. Right. <coughs> Any questions for Matthew? Okay. Uh, let's turn then to uh, the public and see if we have any public comment. Uh, I'm not seeing any here in Bakersfield. Uh, Fresno look uh, clear? There's no public comment in Fresno or online. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, so with that then, we will uh, go ahead and close, uh, close the hearing and see if we have a motion. I can do that. Thank you, Doctor. Um, I move to approve Alon Bakersfield refining petition for a short variance that's forth in docket number S-23-14S with the required six findings of the health and safety code adopted by reference as set forth in the staff report. The variance shall be effective for the period um, 21 consecutive days to occur between June 1st 23 and July 31st, 2023, inclusive or until Alon completes replacement of 250 feet of header piping and returns the VRS to normal operation, whichever occurs first, and shall be subject to conditions on pages three and four of the step report. Okay, thank you, Dr. Na. Motion by Dr. Na. I will second that motion. Uh, second by Ms. Don. Um, uh, Stephanie, would you take the roll, please? Dr. Na, or sorry, yeah, Dr. Na. Yes? Okay, Ms. Den? Yes. Mr. Stovall? Yes. Due to the chair, motion passes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Yeah, so it's approved. Thank you very thank you. much. Thank you very much. So that, uh, that was our final. Um, yeah. Uh, hearing, so why don't we then uh, uh, go to the public comment portion of our uh, agenda, and uh, uh, I'll go ahead and just read the uh, required notice, uh, not let's see if we have any public comment. This time is made available for comments from the public on matters within the board's jurisdiction that are not on the agenda. It is requested that no comments be made during this period on items on the agenda. The public may make comments after each board agenda item uh, during the time allowed for public comment. Additionally, state law prohibits the hearing board from acting on matters that are not on this agenda. Um, so I'm not seeing any public comment down here. Uh, no. And we don't have any public comment in Fresno or online. Okay. Great, great. So we'll go to uh, hearing board member comments, and I would just uh, mm -hmm. say thanks to everybody for making this work. Especially <laughs> Dr. Na, whose schedule I'm sure is a lot tighter than oh, mine, okay. and uh, <laughs> and and all of you. So uh, any other? That's it. And great, great work by by everybody. So uh, let's see. Uh, there's no uh, no new business I'm aware of. Uh, so we'll, uh, and our next meeting will be um, June 14, uh, June 14 uh, 2023. Uh, with that, uh, I guess we will go ahead and uh, adjourn the meeting. Unless, I don't know, Clay, did you have anything you wanted to add? Or? No, I don't. <laughs> um, we are going to be actively recruiting to try to get alt alternates and stuff and engineering position filled so we if you do know anybody, please you know let us know. Okay, uh, we'll um, we'll scour the countryside and see what we can find. <laughs> Engineer. Okay, thank you all. Well, meeting is adjourned, and I uh, hope everybody has a great, uh, great, uh, great rest of May, early June. See you. See you. Uh, thank you. See you in June. Yeah. Thank. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.